am very proud and uh, honored to be here with you. Uh, today, I am going to give a small presentation for about half an hour, and then I will. I would like to hear from you. So, so, so I have seen interesting papers from the students from different colleges, and uh, I am eager to listen to you more than uh, giving this giving this talk. Okay, thank you. Shall we finish? Okay, I started a new research topic called uh, consensus building in distributed systems. So, I will give a, a basic idea of what is this problem and why it is something new and uh, what are the applications of uh, this, this, uh, this strategy. First of all, uh, think if, it, if there is a centralized system, centralized system means you can think of a, a very well connected network okay, or, a, or, a, or a system where everybody is connected to everyone. Okay. That means think of like this scenario in the room, I can hear you and you can hear me. Okay. Suppose we decide to we decide to go somewhere today, then I can ask you what are your choices. I can listen to all your choices and then I can try. If, I, if I'm a rational person, then I'll make a decision that is convenient for everybody. So for example, let's say, let's go to uh, some other meeting room. Then you, you, I ask you, where do you want to go? And then I hear from you, and uh, I try to come up with a, with a, a good uh, uh, place where everybody can go, probably in the shortest time, or some, some kind of rational. I use some rational, rational uh, make a rational decision. But suppose, say, we are all in different groups. So this is one group in this room, and there is another group in another room, and suppose we need to make a decision. Okay? The decision could be about simply a meeting place, or maybe in, in a real world, some sort of a parameter estimation. You know, parameter means think in terms of like, uh, what is the average value of some temperature, for example. Okay? Or what is the, uh, you know, little bit, you know, what is the standard deviation. Or if you think about multiple uh, phenomena, then you can think of like uh, what is the uh, what is it called covariance of the sources that you are trying to observe. Okay? So all these are statistical uh, parameters that you, you some, sometimes you know we have to deal with. We need to estimate those parameters. So the, 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 the problem now becomes a little more difficult and challenging because now we are all distributed. If you are in the same place, uh, if the all the sources are sources are in the same place, then the decision making is pretty straightforward. <laughs> Whereas, if we are distributed across, maybe geographically or in, in some sense, then coming to a consensus about any event, any 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 parameter estimation will be a challenging. Okay? So here, I'm looking at a scenario uh, where I'll show you some light points. So let, let's look at. Uh, I'm considering in this presentation. I am I'm imposing a structure okay, for in the network. So I'm create I'm using a specific structure for the for the network. And I'll say okay, let's let's consider four groups. Notice that none of these these uh, let's call them as group layers. Okay, so C1, C2, C3, C4. They represent the group layers. And then each group consists of, for example, the first group consists of one, two, three, four, four four nodes. Okay. So this is the structure I impose. In fact, it turns out that by imposing a structure, you are actually gaining. For example, sometimes you might ask, now how come you are there is no, no connection between C1 and C2? It may be there. Physically, they may be close. But still, by imposing a specific structure, you will actually understand. You will, you will do better than not having any structure. Okay? So go to the next slide. Okay? Yeah, these are the structures. Now you can, for example, this I say hierarchical tree where you have one, four layers connected, and then and then each, it's like I haven't analyzed the other structures, but but if we do for one structure, probably you can do for another two. Now, go to the second Go back. Uh, one more. So this is the outline. So, uh, for the last few years, I've been working on what I call belief propagation-based transition strategy. So I'm, 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 I developed an algorithm based on 
belief propagation, which is uh, which has been there in the in the literature for past several decades, for almost four or five years. Uh, uh, if you, some of you in communication, if you have read Gallagher's coding theory articles, or coding theory literature, you would see that belief propagation forms a fundamental uh, idea behind behind some of the coding, especially low density parity check codes or LDPC codes are based on belief propagation. I'll tell you what is belief propagation in a minute. In fact, later I realized that in the artificial intelligence community, um, Pearl, Pearl, Julia Pearl also has worked on similar techniques. So those are some AI techniques based on, uh, they don't, it doesn't call belief propagation, but, but something, some, something else. So I should believe, I think uh, I'm right in saying that the original idea of belief propagation started in the 60s, by coding theory uh, researchers, and in in 80s, I believe uh, the work on the Perl's algorithm started in or artificial intelligence algorithm started in 80s. But there is a lot of synergy. So so what happens is you, sh you start doing some work and then start reading the literature, and you suddenly find a lot of connection. So that's what happened in my case, in this case. So I thought I thought I'm doing something new, but then I found somebody else. You know, the, the, this ideas were there before. But the only thing that I'm I'm adding actually this, this line of work that I and other people are adding is that how do you deal with this this uh, the same algorithms but in a in a distributed system? Okay? So there are some new innovations and some of them are old, but still it is an interesting topic. And more recently, I found a call for papers uh, in general on special uh, signal processing, general IEEE transactions on uh, selected topics in signal processing. They called for articles on gossip algorithms. So I never knew gossip, what, what it turned out that whatever I'm doing is actually a gossip algorithm. I call it consensus algorithm or belief propagation algorithm, but actually they are also gossip algorithms. So what is a gossip algorithm? Every person or every node is talking to only the neighbors. For example, whatever is going on here, uh, I'm able to talk to you and you are able to hear me, but nobody else will hear. So we are all our neighbors, we are all neighbors. So if you say something, I can understand. So this is also called a gossip, gossip algorithm, because gossip <coughs> will flow slowly, right? So the same idea is behind what I call belief propagation. Even though the terms are different, they are, they are very similar. So I'm going to show you an analytical model. Yeah. So typically, in the, any researcher, what you do is you have an idea, and then you need to turn into some mathematical model. So why do we need to do that? Because that will explain the things that that will explain a lot of things about the how things work. Okay, so that's what we will learn in few graphs. Then, specifically I'm using bipartite graphs, so I'm sort of limiting the scope, but these ideas can be applied to other structures also. Then I'm going to show you closed form expression for convergence time and consensus estimate. So the idea is, if you're all together, it's only one, in one or two, two rounds, or one round actually, we can decide. But suppose you have your system is distributed, then the question is how many rounds does it take? How many, let's say, iterations does it take to, to come up with the consensus or to converge to whatever we are trying to estimate? Okay? So it's, a, it's an important question because in a network, it is important for us to see, uh, you know, suppose you are, you are implementing, your, you are doing a parameter estimation or you are doing some simple averaging, you need to know how much time does it take? Time here is measured in terms of cycles. Okay. Uh, so what it means is, you know, suppose I tell the first person a secret in his year, in, in, in his years, and then, uh, and let's say we are all supposed to agree on some number. I tell him something uh, as a neighbor, I tell him, and then he will hear from somebody, and then he will do some sort of a computation, and then tell me again what is the consensus between the between the two. So this, if we do for the entire group. Then it takes time, of course, right? Because you have to go back and forth. It's not just one round the eyes in a centralized system. So I'm going to give you some closed form expression. These are new, new results that I got with the with a, with a help of a colleague of mine. Um, these, these results are new. We just submitted to a couple of uh, journals, but um, I'm going to tell you about uh, the new results. So one is convergence time. The second is the estimate itself, the accuracy of estimate. Suppose you're, you're trying to find the mean. Then, compared to the centralized system, uh, you know the actual mean. So, how far is the the 
the, the estimated value in distributed system in comparison with the actual value. So suppose we are trying to find the mean in a distributed setting, but we all, uh, if you, if you are, uh, if you, the system is uh, centralized, then there is a mean which is actual mean. And we are trying to compare how accurate is our result compared to this. And what happens is, as you increase more and more iterations, you may converge to, you keep on converging. But at some point, you have to have a rationale when to stop, and I'll tell you about you know, when you stop exactly. What would be the uh, the, the accuracy of the consensus? And then I'm going to show you some interesting result in uh, in terms of uh, in terms of that uh, the result that I uh, in, that is that I am able to observe is uh, a a network that is irregular seems to be performing better than a regular structure. So let me you need to know what is regular and irregular. Regular means the if you represent the, as a graph, every node has same degree. So if the degree is same for all the leader nodes, then we call that as a regular network. But it's irregular means you keep on changing the the, the, the degrees are different, and, some, and also you keep on changing the connections. In fact, let me put it this way: instead of saying regular and irregular, I think the correct uh, notion is uh, idea is if you keep changing your connections, okay, if you don't keep your network static but change the connections, then you are better off. We'll see you know, how. I, I only did through experiment. No, that's not a theoretical result. So this, these are the definitions you know, most of, uh, already explained you. A decentralized system, for instance, it's like a multi-group network. Each group has a leader and, and, and some members. And a node may participate as a member in more than one group. Okay? So that's how the information flows. <coughs> really speaking, if I am only sitting here and we are all talking, the information never flows to the other group. So the only way the information flows to the other group is by if some of some of us go go there, which means that the network has to be has to be such that, that a member will keep on will keep on moving from one group to another group. Or I can say I can have some sort of a maybe a phone connection to the other group where whatever is happening here I can I can connect. So that is so that's the that's the meaning of the set. The third is I'm also, for simplicity's sake, we are assuming that the net, all the nodes have the same functionality. Meaning that, you know, even though I say a leader, <coughs> the leader is not really different from the other member. Okay? So this is one model. In fact, I am specifically focusing on this what you call bipartite graph model. Bipartite graph means there are two groups. One is, here are the leaders, here are the nodes. Then, then what the interesting thing here is, the peers, do not communicate. For example, C1 doesn't talk to C2. Same way, B1 does not talk to B2. Okay? So let's call them, these are one group of peers and these are another group of peers. So the peer-to-peer -peer communication is not enough. Now once again, it seems to, seems to be artificial, but the, cap, the, the idea is by imposing this structure, you are able to understand the behavior or characteristics of the network much better. Okay? So you, you may not, you may be wondering you know, why, there is, why, why there is no connection. If you want, you can make the connection. But by keeping this simple, by imposing a structure, you are always better off than not having a structure. So I'll speak for uh, these models. We already talked about this. So this is another mesh model where uh, basically you are kind of constraining or like, reducing the number of connections. Okay, now let's look at the specific, a simple graph, a simple bipartite graph. C1, C2, there are four nodes. Right? And then, really speaking, the C1 doesn't have to be a distinct node. It could be the functionality of the C1 could be implemented by, for example, V1. Okay? So in this case, actually there are only four nodes. Okay? But I'm calling I'm, uh, the node 1, which is V1, is also acting like a leader for the group. So in that case, I call these nodes as virtual fusion centers. So actually there are four nodes, but I'm saying uh, we, are, we, are, we are representing in this in this, uh, in, in this here in this way where V1 also acts like a leader. Okay? But anyway, let's consider the yeah, let's consider the, the model that we have and that I, I can represent this graph as a as a matrix. Look at the H matrix, the first row. So what does the first row have? Anybody can see? Anybody can tell me what does it represent? The first row 1110. The first row 1110, it represents 
right? The connections with the V1, right? So C1 is connected to, this is about C1, C1 connections. Connections are to 1, 2, or 3. C2 is connected to 2 and 4. So if there is a 0, that means there is no connection. So this matrix, in fact, it plays a big role, even though it's uh, simple and straightforward. It's called, let's call this as a, I'm calling it as a routing matrix in the, in the, in the context of sensor network, but actually it's called also the parity matrix in coding. Okay. So we get the notion is very simple, uh, notation is very simple. These are group layers, these are the nodes. So, now the algorithm works like this. In the, there are two rounds, so it's like a cycle. The reader nodes will talk to, actually the sensor node, to begin with, the sensor nodes here, they observe something, or they, they estimate something, and they pass it on to the leaders. Okay. And the leaders in turn, in the second round, they will, they will do some sort of a computation, for example, averaging. Okay. And then they send the information back to the sensor. So notice, notice what's happening. For example, C1 is, does some sort of averaging of these three values, right? And then the next round, C1 is communicating to C1 is communicating to Y, the, all these three nodes. At the same time, C2 is also communicating. So notice how information is flowing from group to group, simply because Y2 is Y2 is communicating to C2, right? And then C2 is communicating to Yeah, C, Y2 is communicating to C2, even though there is no connection from Y4 directly to C1, but it is in the next round, actually, it will go. It will, it will collect, it will gather some information about Y2. Can you see that? So even though there are two distinct groups, the groups are, every member is sort of connected to every other member through the cycles, or the time. Over the time, you can see that communication is connected. So communication happens from every node to every other node, in, in, in indirect. But I hope you are able to see. Next one. Let me go back to one more thing. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm calling, I'm creating two vectors, C and B. C represents the degree, the degree distribution or degrees of the later nodes. Here, for example, there are three connections here and two connections. And another vector B, B is the degrees corresponding to the sensor nodes. So here, for example, Y1 has only one degree, Y2 has two, and Y3 has one, and Y4 has. So, let's Remember these two vectors, C and V. Now I'm actually turning, like I have this model, I have this idea of sensor network, and I represented like a graph. Now I'm turning to analytical model. Okay? Next slide. So here, so remember the C, we talked about C represents the degree. Okay?